the greatest ideas have come from sitting on the toilet. Every day, some company, individual or group, is known for giving the public a load of bullshit. Come here to get your daily dose of shit by Alan Cousin. It's time you hear the shit everyone wants to know. there. Welcome to your Daily Dose of Shit with your host, Alan Coven. So, hope you're enjoying today, Thursday, February 16, 2023. I must say, actually, I had a pretty good day. I can't really complain. Things got done. I got my work done. I was able to uh, do some things on the side that needed to be done on my to-do list. And for the most part, the weather was um, decent. 45 degrees today here in Good old Dallas, Texas. So, what am I going to speak about today? What is Mr. Cousin going to speak about today? Well, of course, first of all, I must say that uh, my coffee is doing quite well for me because I was able to go to my white porcelain throne, sit down, and enjoy a very easygoing uh, dump, basically. And uh, I felt real good. It was nice sometimes when your body works with you instead of against you don't you think so yes uh that was nice and also of course i was strolling strolling it is on my good old smartphone you know reading articles and news and so forth and i was like you know what today it's just not one of those days i just want to talk about what's in the news because really there's not a lot in the news that's really i should say important to talk about at this time i'm sure they're important but not something we can really find an answer to, so why discuss it kind of thing. So, I decided to speak about me. Yes, I'm going to tell you a little bit about Mr. Allen Cousin and tell you something that many people don't really know, but basically uh, occurs. Or should I say occurred? Sorry, my apologies out there. So, Mr. Cousin, I who was the founder of Get Up Radio and Get Up Radio Media, did some other things in life. I mean, I've met quite a few girls and ladies in my life. I've, of course, traveled quite a significant amount of time to see many places in my life. And, of course, I've had quite a few jobs as well before I got my business started. But one thing that is very intriguing and interesting about me is I own... A cocktail. Yes. You heard me right. I own a cocktail. I know. You're like, hold on. Did you just say you own a cocktail? Yes. I, Alan J. Cousin, owns his own alcoholic cocktail. And this alcoholic cocktail used to be called a D4G, but then we discovered we couldn't call it the D4G, so we named it a much better cocktail name, and it is called the Famous Celebrity Cocktail. And you can actually read about it on FamousCelebrityCocktail.com. Now, the question, how long have you owned this cocktail, Mr. Cousin? Well, surprisingly, I have owned this cocktail since 2010. Yes. And, of course, I have to repay to keep the patent in my cocktail but yes i it established itself in 2010 basically now the famous celebrity cocktail what is in the famous celebrity cocktail you ask well let me do incite you with the ingredients to this famous celebrity cocktail it is one shot of vodka, a half a shot of tequila, one shot of cranberry juice, one shot of iced tea, one shot of lemonade, and a quarter ounce of pineapple juice. And then of course you take a lemon and just 
rim it around the rim of the glass. And then, of course, you have the famous celebrity cocktail. Now, this cocktail, because we were very serious about understanding it, understanding what it was, was going to be made for and so forth, was really made for females. Not saying a male can't drink the cocktail, of course, because, I mean, hey, it's about being a VIP, right? That's why we named the famous celebrity cocktail. So, this cocktail basically is a quite a banger because when you think about it every time you drink it you're literally drinking two shots of alcohol and the interesting part is you're drinking two shots of different alcohol that normally you wouldn't mix together because why would you mix vodka and tequila together but yet we did and the way it worked is we had a very good friend who basically won fourth place in the Ritz Carlton Alcoholic Master Contest. And basically, uh, he helped to devise how much alcohol would have to be added so that it wouldn't overpower each other. So, in simple situations, quite remarkable, I believe myself, if you drink our famous celebrity cocktail and you're a vodka drinker, you will actually taste the vodka more so than the tequila. But if you are, quote unquote, a tequila lover, you will actually taste the tequila more so than the vodka. How it happens, I personally cannot explain it, but he made it possible. And like I said, it is a double shot. So every time you're drinking, you get getting two shots. So let me tell you. After that third drink, you might want to slow your roll, basically, because um, it's a little powerful there if you get my drift. But, like I said, it, it is known, because we did a survey, of course, after making the alcoholic drink, that most women prefer drinking it than men. Not saying men don't enjoy it, it's just that most women prefer drinking it over men. Out of ten people drinking it, most about 8 out of 10 women enjoyed it, whereas out of 10 men, about 6 men enjoyed it. So, clearly, the famous Celebrity Cocktail is a female's preference drink, but it still is a very strong drink and a very tasty one. And you might want to try it yourself. Now, like I say, you can go to FamousCelebrityCocktail.com and you can mix it, mix it yourself. Or, hey, surprise our bartender and just go there and say, I'd like to make a famous celebrity cocktail dot com cocktail, please, and let him know basically how to make it. And trust me, you will not turn away or return it. I guarantee it. You will be more than happy to not only enjoy it, but probably ask for another one after you're finished. Now, how did this come about, right? The famous celebrity cocktail, which was originally called a D4G. Well, to explain it quite simply, and it's a very interesting story, I might add, D4G stood for the four guys. Now, I have three great friends in New Orleans. One, Tony, goes by Slim. One, Ed, who goes by Eddie. And one, Gerson, who basically goes by Gerson. But these were very good friends of mine who I met while working at the Ritz Carlton New Orleans. Uh, and as I was working in the Ritz Carlton New Orleans, I basically worked alongside of Ed and worked alongside of Tony in loss prevention slash security. But I also got to work alongside Gerson, who basically was working in hospitality in a different department. And we would go out all the time, especially on the weekends, and enjoy ourselves in French quarters downtown go to different bars, whether it be in Slidell, Kenner, downtown, you name it. And we drunk a lot. And we partied a lot. And somehow or another, we got home. And sometimes we would go during the week, have a good time, get home, only to have to wake up about three to five hours later to come to work that next day. How we did it, I'm still trying to figure it out because let me tell you the amount of drinks we would drink sometimes I don't know how I was able to wake up the next day and actually physically go to work but we did and so here we are the four guys enjoying ourselves having a fun filled time living life right yet we wanted to go ahead and 
create a YouTube show because, you know, that was around the time YouTube was kind of out there, you know, really popular with being known for reality shows or comedy shows or what, what or, you know, whatever you consider. And we wanted our own little show because we're like, hey, we're in New Orleans. You know, people love New Orleans. People enjoy New Orleans and hell, people enjoy the people of New Orleans. So why not have something for ourselves? I mean, hey, I get up radio anyway. So it was like, hey, let's add it to get up radio because we had already did a show previously, which did quite well. So we was like, hey, let's do another one. So we did. And that's what we wanted to do. The four guys of NOLA, basically, where we would show them what four guys can do having a great time enjoying themselves partying in new orleans and the friendship between us and it was fun i mean didn't get a lot of viewers but we enjoyed it and what was great about it is because we didn't get a lot of viewers we was like you know what we're gonna find a way to improve our viewer in uh view it amount of viewers so sorry in doing so we thought about what can we do to establish a greater amount of viewers to wanting to watch our show. And we came up with all kind of ideas and we was like, nah, that don't work on, that don't work now. And then we finally said, you know what? What about a cocktail? Let's let's create our own cocktail. And, I, and of course we were drunk at the time we were thinking about this too, so you have to remember that. But and some of us are high, not myself, but others might you know, were high. And we said, well, shit, why not? Let's do that. So he's like, okay, well, how are we going to make this drink? And I said, hey, let's pick the favorite beverage. Each one of us pick our favorite beverage. We'll mix it together, and there you go. Where Gerson's favorite beverage was basically um, tequila. And Ed's favorite beverage was cranberry juice. And Tony's favorite beverage was vodka. My favorite be beverage was an Arnold Palmer because basically I enjoy lemonade and iced tea together. So therefore, that is how we became the Four Guys D4G Cocktail. And of course, like I said, we got our great friend who basically won fourth place in the uh, bartending, Ritz Carlton Bartending Contest in Las Vegas to help create the drink. And of course, then we had to look upon how to patent a drink. And let me tell you, patenting a drink is not cheap, my friend. A uh, couple of grand. So just letting you know, if you decide you want to create your own drink, you want to have a couple of thousand on hand and you know i had money at the time get up radio meteor was doing quite well for me and and you know it helped out here and there so i was like i i'll pay for the drink i'll pay for it so i, I, I took the money and i made the patent for them i mean they helped me out and i think well like, ah, i got money i'll take care of it. so i did and there you have it we had a cocktail and let me tell you, it was fun bringing that, promoting that cocktail in New Orleans because you got to think about it. How many people don't drink in New Orleans? Let's think about that, ladies and gentlemen. How many people do not drink in New Orleans? So bringing a new cocktail on board was like, whoa. And of course, we were very good friends with um, the owner of Daisy Dukes uh, located on Charter Street. And, you know, he I was asked if we can have it you know the cocktail on the menu he said sure why not let's take a chance and see and he was one of two only that was allowed to have it as we went to this favorite billiard, billiard pool billiards car club uh over the river and gretna and we decided to let that owner be able to put that drink on his menu and that was it those two people were the only two that can put that drink on their menu because again, remember we own the drink so you can't just plop the drink on your menu without our permission and like i said we enjoyed giving it away for free we enjoyed seeing people drink it and order it it was like wow look at us we're doing wonderful now the great thing about it was is that the owner at daisy duke said the drink was doing quite well and he wanted to actually help us bottle the drink to actually sell it to the public and that was a grand idea. And I was like, this could be a very good opportunity for us. But the only thing I didn't like about it was at the current time, not all of our quote unquote friends in this particular drink, a few of our friends was not doing their part in marketing it and not doing their part in helping us promote it or giving us money towards promoting it. And I was looking at, here's the opportunity of a lifetime that we're going to get this drink bottled and actually put it on the market 
And then here we are having everyone gain percentages of profit from this drink. But is everyone participating equally to promote and help with the, making this drink a reality? Well, of course, the question was no. So I went to my friend and I told him, even though it's a great opportunity, I really appreciate it. I don't want to bottle the drink at this time because I feel like it would not be the right thing to do. And he was amazed because he thought I would just go with it. And he was like, are you sure? Because this is a great opportunity, a great moment. And I'm more than happy to assist. And I was like, I know. Oh, God, I know. But I was like, no. I can't. And I was a majority owner, so I had the decision-making power. And I was like, no, we can't do it. And like I said, I really wanted to do it. And to this day, I'm still considering bottling the drink now because I have time on my hands. Um, as far as funding, I do have the ability to actually bottle the drink myself with the financial backing of my own. It's just that I'm going to wait a minute before I do it but I am really considering finally making the famous celebrity cocktail bottled so that people can enjoy it as a mixer or as a bottled alcohol you know so they can see how great the famous celebrity cocktail is you know so but can you believe yes I have and I do own a cocktail and it was quite nice because sometimes you know when I was single I would go around to different bars or restaurants and of course you know you see a nice beautiful enchanting female that you want to approach and instead of me saying something simple as hey let me buy you a drink I would go and say hey do you mind if I buy you my drink and of course that was a very good uh, icebreaker for conversation because of course they said excuse me did you say your drink I said yeah can I buy you my drink i want a cocktail and of course conversation begun so it was kind of nice you know to meet new ladies and enter conversations with them by offering the opportunity of tasting my cocktail can you believe though i've honed that cocktail for about 13 years i think it's about time we probably do bottle it so maybe in 2024 you might be hearing me talk about bottling the famous celebrity cocktail and who knows, maybe I might give away a couple bottles. But we'll see. That's that's the future. So we'll, we'll leave it at that. So there we go. You've learned something new about the wonderful, mysterious Alan Cousin. And that is my daily dose of shit for you today, ladies and gentlemen. And I hope you enjoyed it. And if you have more questions, feel free to... Email me at let's talk at getupradio.com. I'm more than happy to uh, answer. Or if you want to uh, discover how you can help to invest in this potential drink that will be on the market in the future, hey, once again, feel free to contact me. Or if you made your own drink, hey, let me know because I would love to talk about your drink. You know, maybe not on this particular podcast, but on another one that I do own. So, anyway, you've heard. You've listened. And now, it is time for me to go. So, with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed yourself. I hope you're living the life that you should be living. I hope that you're being aware of everything that's going on and waking up because the Matrix is real. I will say, there are idiots everywhere. Just smile and laugh because they will not go away. Have a great one. Thanks for listening to your daily dose of shit talk show. If you have some insights, questions, or information of bullshit to pass on, please email us at momentousevents at AOL.com. Make sure to come back daily to hear some new shit about money, business, life, and who knows what else. As I take a dump on the toilet. <laughs>